welcome to another episode of Stage Cigarettes Presents, A Ghost in the Magazine. I'm Steph. And I'm Elle. And today we're continuing the Warren Madness, which sounds like a pretty groovy disease, with Annabelle. Okay, so last week we did The Conjuring, and you know that opening scene in The Conjuring where the two girls are talking to Ed and Lorraine about their possessed doll Annabelle, and that sort of just starts to tell you the story of who Ed and Lorraine quote-unquote are that's where this movie picks up and i'm gonna let you know right now i feel like they could have just not done this i feel like they could have just not done all of it they made a choice it was a choice that they leaned into that's true i'm also going to let you know that alcohol is involved in this episode and so it may be just a little different than the previous one but it makes this much more palatable Mm -hmm. so the couple that this movie surrounds is a cookie cutter white couple you know there's nothing wrong with that white people make babies it'd be like that sometimes but my (laughs) thing is the wife looks like quinn from glee and the husband looks like Newt Scamander from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I don't know either of these references. Oh, so I'm sorry. Okay. That's It's okay, but he looks just like him. So that's really all I could think about. They're a very cute couple. They look related. She's pregnant, which automatically makes me nervous because literally everything you could possibly think of to scare you during your pregnancy pretty much happens to her. And it's my whole nightmare. All the fears you can possibly think of being pregnant and some stuff that you can't think of. So he buys her a present because she's super into dolls, which why? No offense to doll collectors, but you know, this world has a history of haunted dolls. I forget what we named him, but you know the one I'm talking about, right? The one that's in the museum? R word. We gave him a name, but like... (laughs) why why do that well she also collects all these absolutely hideous looking dolls with like terrible vibes and then she puts them in the baby's room that baby doesn't care about dolls it doesn't want dolls a newborn cannot play with a fucking porcelain doll it's more like her little weird fixation forced on the kid it's very weird but parents be doing stuff like that especially some white parents i don't know i'm just sorry but While they're living their life, I think he's a med student. He's about to be finished. They've got this little cookie cutter life, except he proves himself in the beginning to be like most men. He does redeem himself through the movie. You can say that, I guess. (laughs) I would say that he treats her like a child. It comes across very patronizing to me. That's valid. So they mix in some like helter skelter shit into this movie mm-hmm. which really really bothers me it's like it's like they grabbed a bunch of different elements of other movies and like true crime shit and just jumbled it together and was like demons and you know there you have a story which shame on y'all because you can take one or two elements from other movies other horror movies because I mean nothing is inherently unique and you can put a unique twist on it they didn't do that here they jumbled a bunch of stuff together so It was very Manson family shit with the murder next door. It was also inconsistent, which was my problem. For one thing, their lore is Swiss cheese. It doesn't make any sense. There's so many fucking holes in it. They say at one point that it was a ritual killing to uh, summon a demon, which first of all, if this bitch is doing a ritual killing, she's already summoned a demon. She's fulfilling a pact. That's a different process. For another thing, I would say that demon is Christian mythos. And most people that are summoning non-human spirits don't look at them as demons. They're looking at them as old gods or whatever else and if you are a christian mystic you're not working with demons you're working with other types of ethereal beings and then they said that the ritual needs kin and innocence so kin was the parents there are neighbors that got killed and innocence i was assuming they were edging towards the baby but apparently demons full-ass Christian mythology demons that are all about evil and chaos have a better concept of consent than most white frat boys because the demon couldn't take the baby because it couldn't consent. So then it turns apparently to the mom because obviously this grown-ass woman is completely pure and has done nothing in her life. But then there's an even worse twist because it doesn't even take her. A sacrifice is made and it's a fucking bullshit sacrifice. The person who takes the plunge is not only a black woman who comes in to be the savior for the white woman, which is a trope they didn't need. They already looked bad. And she has all of this baggage about feeling like she killed her kid because of a car accident. She's like the 
least pure person because she has all this guilt on her soul. Whether or not it's legit, if you believe you're guilty, it sticks with you. So yes, all this rage is warranted. Let's backpedal a little bit softly. So the first thing I want to touch on is they show this Manson family killing of the kin, the next door neighbor, the girl who Mm -hmm. kills them. That's her parents. And then they come into this cute little family's house and try to murder them they don't do a very good job but here's the thing that bothers me this murderer cult lady is like holding annabelle when she dies and her blood falls on the face and that's when the shit happens that has every implication that this is the origin Mm -hmm. of annabelle however there's a whole movie called annabelle creation which gives her yet another motherfucking origin which ties in the nun like, they needed any more shitty spinoffs. The Nun is trash, which is why we chose not to cover it this month, because, oh my god. <laughs> it's just demons upon demons in here, which, to be fair, this is very Warren-esque. And to mm-hmm. also be fair, I couldn't even be mad at the Warrens for this, because I looked it up. None of this storyline has anything to do with the Warrens. This is entirely, like, made up by the writers. So Did James Wan do this one also? Yes. Okay, I watched the special features at the end, and this is what really set me off. This huh. motherfucker sits there and says he had the honor to read Ed Warren's book. Ed Warren is a fucking confidence man. You're really proud of that? And then you act like you're doing some big artistic thing to tell these stories why don't you write something original instead of fluffing up something that was already fabricated that preyed on people that were psychologically damaged and the funny thing is the warrens were not in my periphery in this one it was just all of the bad writing the bad storytelling the way that both the actor and james wan went all in and the extra content at Mm. the end not having this fuck this okay so literally who is the actor because he played in some little ding dong roles he's not like a big actor his filmography he has things in it but I think he's a theater guy like he's done theater roles I think this is the only big-ish role that he's been in and the only reason why it can be considered big-ish is because it's in the Conjuring universe it's yeah. not anything and no disrespect none I want to talk to anybody who is scared by this movie <laughs> you can just slide into my DMs I just want to have a little conversation I'm trying to see something so one thing I can say that made my butthole pucker <laughs> during this movie was all those close-up scenes of the wife sewing because I just knew it was going to get her finger and like this has Mm -hmm. nothing to do with possession it has nothing to do with demons it's got nothing to do with haunted dolls I knew it was coming and I sew Mm -hmm. and that's it and I'm like what is it going to get her and that was the most intense thing for me yes very anxiety inducing so here are some things that happened that pissed me the fuck off okay (laughs) some light things and then we'll go into the heavy things the fact that the husband threw Annabelle away and when she decided to come back in one of the boxes filthy as fuck you keep her no the fact that he left his high-risk pregnancy wife alone to go to this conference no your wife's health and life is more important your unborn child than a conference that may make you look good bro no and then that's why your house caught on fire and you had to move to an apartment bitch so third of all there's just too much to name and i was gonna go step by step with the plot but i'm not really gonna do that so it's not a very good plot but i can tell you one thing that was very interesting and I liked and it's not even super interesting is that once they move into this apartment complex right and she's taking the baby on an outing first of all that baby is the cutest fucking baby I've ever seen in a movie Mm. so happy the baby was so happy and like laughing considering her house is haunted Mm -hmm. and she sleeps in a room with a haunted doll in it but she passes these two kids drawing on the stairs and the little girl's like answering all her questions and the little boy's like don't fucking talk to strangers don't tell her where we live and I was like that's right stranger danger you're smart I didn't mean to yell like that okay so the other thing that fucking pissed me off is that I I hate the concept of apartment buildings that have storage downstairs that mm-hmm. people keep their extra shit. I don't like that. It keeps me out. You wouldn't catch me dead down there. I don't care how much extra shit I have. I'll use it as furniture. She goes down there, some creepy shit happens, and then she gets a fucking symbol scratched into her arm. Where are we going? I was actually watching a cloud that looked like Moby Dick outside my window when that was happening because it was more engrossing than the movie. I'm drunk now, but I was feverish. <laughs> when I watched this because I had just gotten my booster shot so I was mad and physically ill at the same time and I wasn't having a good time it wasn't a good time for me she was literally going ah, ah, ah. <laughs> sent you a bunch of angry text messages yeah. 
<laughs> and it sounded just like that. And I was like, yeah, I know. I really do. I swear I do. So they mix in some weird shit about cults and saying they're disciples of the ramp. None of it really is cohesive. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I think okay. it's interesting that the cop comes back and he's telling her all this stuff and she's like pressing him like, and, and, and he's like, it's just a bunch of Focus, focus. So why are you bothering her? Why are you coming to tell her all of this? Don't even bother. You know, yeah. she went through a whole traumatic thing and she gave birth prematurely because her fucking house caught on fire by ghosts. I don't know if it's just the way that they did that, but that woman, at least visually, she looked nine months pregnant anyway, so I was very confused. The other thing that didn't make any sense to me is that the husband is patronizing as fuck at first, and then once the priest co-signs this, then he's like, oh yeah, I'm all on board. Personally, and you know, it could be just because I love horror movies and I have a horror movie podcast, but my baby comes to me and is like, I'm being haunted. I'm like, bet, let's get some cameras. Let's paranormal activity this shit. I'm going to be- just believe you. Rather than thinking you're crazy because paranormal shit does happen. So let's do that first. Let's set up cameras in the house. You document everything that happens to you. We'll try and figure that out one-on-one. You know, I'm not going to let my fucking pregnant wife feel like she's crazy. I'm not going to let her spiral into postpartum if I can prevent any of that i would make a damn good husband i'm just putting that out there ladies anyways but then they go to the priest so that she can say everything and the priest is having such a candid matter of fact conversation about demons here's the thing that's not real that does not happen okay and god i bring up the exorcist often for a movie i fucking despise but there's a whole thing okay Mm -hmm. it's very important because the number of people who have died during unsanctioned and sanctioned exorcisms is too high it's too much you know the church really can't take responsibility for things things like that they don't want to make themselves accountable they don't want to put themselves at risk there there are several steps and ed warren says that in the conjuring so why would they go back now yeah yes demons it's demons Mm -hmm. yes i'll come over yeah what Demons on demons on demons. On and I toast. also, at one point they say that they're raising the literal devil. Like the devil is living in the doll. But I thought oh, it I was Annabelle. That. I thought it was a demon. What is it? Because you know that the devil is different than a demon, right? Even in Christian mythology, the devil is like the arch demon. And even demons, demons have orders that they're in. I have entire books that talk about the fucking orders of demons and how many legions are under them. We've For talked about sake. this. In yes. the um, hereditary episode when we were talking about P money and his posse. <laughs> P money. <laughs> P money. He's got a big posse. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> It just is what it is. I'm just saying, if you're writing this script, read a single fucking occult book. Okay, maybe you don't want to. You're going to come up with something whole cloth. Make it consistent. Don't fucking railroad whole groups of people that have whole traditions. I would have loved if they just made some shit up. You know what I mean? They Mm -hmm. made this underworld deity, okay? They made him up. And then you make him rules. Because Mm -hmm. everything paranormal exists by a set of rules. Everything in creation exists by a set of rules. Make it make sense for us. Especially in stories. As a writer, I haven't finished anything. I can't complain, but. No, sure we can. We absolutely can. This is why we have a podcast. We can do whatever we want here, okay? (laughs) As long as we yell allegedly in the background. Allegedly. (laughs) Those things are allowed to piss us off as fans. We have Mm -hmm. every right to. Without the fans, you get no money. You get no notoriety, okay? And this is what having a horror podcast means. I get to pick that shit apart if I feel like it. Because it's it's lazy. It's lazy. And everyone on this podcast who's a regular writes. And we spend lots of time because it matters to us. Make it matter to your fans. Period. Okay, so a couple more things that piss me off. After the shit happens, you know, the baby's here and whatever, and shit gets crazy, and the husband is trying to tell the wife, oh, get some sleep, get some sleep. I'll stay up and watch the baby. Why not put the baby in your fucking room, dude? Just, you all camp out together. You could not keep the baby away from me. And this happens constantly when the baby's taken at the end-ish. It's like, why the fuck was the baby on its own if you thought that there was a demon after to begin with? Have you no instincts as a parent? No, because the entire time they've been parents, they're confused and scared so no they don't have anything Fair like enough. that so the other thing the priest comes in right trying to save the day and he's like let me take the doll and the bitch is like what okay take it it 
depresses me greatly when people do dumb shit. And I know it does you too. Dumb shit for no reason. So this man takes the doll. Weird stuff's happening. This motherfucker is running into a church. Instead of just running through the open door, he stops and looks back. That's how he gets fucked up. Just keep going, dude. Cut the door open one foot in. Get in there. Oh my God. I literally put, I'm mad in all capitals, explanation point. And I stay mad at that point because all this time, nothing's happening when the husband's home, but the black friend comes over and then everything happens. And the husband's trying to call her. He, his call doesn't go through. Notorious scary movie shit. Just expect your phone to not fucking work. Makes sense. So the friend, while everything's happening in there, like shit's popping off and then the priest which is actually just the demon taking his form like knocks on the door or whatever and this part's so fucking cheesy it hurts my kidneys even to just watch it he literally has the possession eyes which don't do shit for me in this movie and he yells may god have mercy on your soul how fucking dramatic and there's this scene that really really irks me because they're looking up at the ceiling and there's lots of sounds up there and so they're looking and all of a sudden there's a black demon crawling on the ceiling and like drops down from the and it's the same demon that was hiding behind the doll and it reminds me of something it was very much like insidious same oh, demon okay. shape just a different fucking color the same behind the guy i didn't that watch was- insidious oh yeah we're gonna cover it for the podcast <laughs> That movie is very good. And coincidentally, Patrick Wilson is in it. He's Mm. not as great as he is playing Ed Warren. I just, I'm sorry. I just wish they had picked a different actor because I like him. But there is this wonderful scene in Insidious where they first show the demon and it's like half the face and half of his face because the demon's like behind him. It scared me so viciously when I first saw that movie. And I think it's like chef's kiss art they ripped that shit the fuck off in this movie i'm not even kidding just because you make it a different color doesn't mean it's not stolen borrow elements go ahead but like Mm -hmm. little ones not like whole scenes that make that movie what it is don't do that that's lazy i personally feel like none of us are doing anything unique you take these things that inspire you and break them down to the elements and then translate them through your own unique perception and brain and they did not do that they just took fucking piecemeal shit from everything just like the manson thing in the beginning massively turned me off this is sharon tate getting stabbed in the stomach and it's supposed to elicit a manipulative emotional reaction yes it's cheap bro and i couldn't sit here and tell you specifically which elements reminded me of it but there are lots of the omen vibes Mm. kind of sprinkled into this movie and as much money as you guys fucking made as creative as I know that James Wan can be because he can get kudos for other movies he really I can give him that The Conjuring Ed and Lorraine Warren aside is a good spook like it's a good movie it just feels like cheating and it just feels like I was robbed of what could have been a good experience and then the stuff with the black woman really fucking pissed me off because I really liked her character Mm -hmm. she was caring she was interesting she was persistent you know she's like I'm quirky because I know about the occult Mm -hmm. and I know you're interested and I can help you Mm -hmm. and to have her take this woman's bullshit and sacrifice herself for her literally the only likable character in the movie when she said I'm old and there's very little that surprises me anymore I felt that in my whole body (laughs) she was the only likable character and felt like her only utility was to be sacrificed and that's so hurtful to me like we've covered great great movies with black women who do great things okay This is not what we're here for, to be a tool to further your white lady agenda. Oh, please. I want to say one more thing before we run out of time, though. I think that the Raggedy Ann doll that was original is a lot more scary. Yes, I agree. It's not something you would expect from a Raggedy Ann doll. Not this dirty porcelain bitch. I expect her to do crimes against me. I would clutch my purse walking past Annabelle on the fucking street. She looks human enough. She has the uncanny valley effect. So that's where all the uneasy easiness comes from because she looks human but your brain's like this isn't human you don't have that with raggedy ann it's just a sweet little doll that's gonna fuck you up and see that's scarier i agree and i <laughs> always thought that from the first time i found out that the real annabelle was a raggedy ann doll so when i was a child someone gifted me and i was very young i don't remember this my mom just tells me the story mm-hmm. someone gifted me like a giant raggedy ann doll mm-hmm. and my father piece of shit 
he would hide behind the doll so he would make it move and be like chew baby chew baby chew baby and that's scary <laughs> but <laughs> terrifying put that in a movie i'll watch it okay but instead we got raggedy annabelle from the street <laughs> from the trash so we're gonna put annabelle to rest 10 out of 10 would never watch this nope. again it's not for me it wasn't entertaining and you know i love a good ride there was not anything you also new- like haunted objects especially i dogs. love cursed toys this wasn't really a cursed toy because <laughs> when they show this bitch stand up and then she starts levitating she wasn't levitating a whole demon was holding her up that doesn't do it for me yeah sorry all right that was annabelle she's done next week we're gonna cover the devil made me do it which i've seen once i am probably ready to watch again i haven't Maybe. even heard of it so I'm... oh it's the latest installment but i can tell you i stopped right before the credits because they played the recording of the exorcism and i don't fuck with that <laughs> all right so you can follow this podcast on twitter at gitm podcast you can follow me on Twitter at Witch X Pudding. And you can follow me at Nocturnical. Okay, bye.